In this episode, we are going to be extending a user plugin with a few fields. We are going to add a Facebook field to our users and also biography field so that our users can input their Facebook page or add some information about themselves. As you will see, October has this uh, pretty well covered, so it's not going to be hard at all. Uh, October already has some hooks for you to hook into other plugins and extend them. So this episode isn't just about the user's plugin, but it can be applied to whatever plugin you want. So first of all, let's go to our code editor and we are going to go to Rain Lab user. And as you can see, the user have some models and one of those models is the user model. So these are our users essentially. And uh, if we go to user columns, we can see all the actually fields. We can see all the available fields that we have for our user. So if I click on John Doe right here, we can see the fields like uh, email, reset password, password confirmation, groups, and so on. And that is all, all reflected right here. So password confirmation, password, uh, password create, uh, you have this send invites, email, and so on. So you have those fields. Now, what you could do is just add those fields right here. And that would kind of work, but uh, whenever you update that plugin, all of that information would be gone. So we don't want to do it that way. The way that we want to do it is create our own plugin and then with that plugin extend the user plugin. So I'm going to go to Builder uh, and create a new plugin. So create plugin and I'm just going to call it Profile. Click OK. Now we have our plugin created. If we go to our code editor, we can go to plugins, watch, learn, profile. And now we have that plugin right here. So in that plugin, we are going to extend the users plugin from RainLab. So we want to add the Facebook field and biography field to our users. Uh, but to do that, we would have to create database uh, columns or fields in our table to uh, account for that so that we can save in some place that Facebook or biography. So to do that, we are going to be using migrations. So my migrations, I'm not going to go into much detail about it. You can read about it on uh, Laravel's page. So migrations are essentially abstracts of your database. And once you migrate them, uh, they will create fields and columns in your database. Uh, you write code for migration and that code is very simple to understand as you will see. So let's see an example of that migration. So I'm going to go to user plugin. So rain lab user, and then you would go to updates. And these are all the migrations for that plugin. So you one of those migration is called create user stable. So if we click on it, you can see something like this. So this is the migration. And uh, these are the fields that you are creating in your database. So you just do table. So that's incremental ID, name, email, password, activation code, and so on. So I'm just actually going to copy all of this. And then I'm going to create my own updates in my uh, profile plugin. So we just go here. And I'm going to create uh, call that migration, add new fields. Dot PHP. Okay, and paste this in. Okay, uh, so the namespace is not going to be rain lab user, but it's going to be watch learn profile. And then uh, you leave all, all of this as it is. Uh, instead of class create user stable, we are just going to call it add new fields. 
add new fields and uh, instead of this schema create so if you leave this as, as it is uh, the October or Laravel which is running under October is going to try to create the users table we don't want to do that we want to update the users table with our own fields so instead of create we are just going to write table right here Okay, so the table is users and I'm going to delete everything. And now we are going to create our own migration. So first of all, we need a Facebook field in our database. Okay, so we created a string type of field which is going to be called Facebook and it's going to be nullable. That just means that the user doesn't have to input anything into our field. Next thing we are going to do is create a biography field. And it's also going to be nullable but it's going to be a type of text so that the user can enter uh, much more text than it could uh, in the string field. Okay, so we got that covered. One more, uh, one more very important thing to do is uh, to create this drop, uh, actually down function. So the down function uh, is used when you want to refresh your database and start a new, or when you want to re uh, revert uh, the. Uh, database to the previous version you want to drop some fields and so on so you have to create that right here and uh, you have to especially create it for this case because if you leave this as it is when you refresh your plugin it's going to delete the users table so we don't want that we just actually want to delete these two fields from the table and to do that we're going to delete this and instead of that, we're just going to do table drop down. So we just open up an array and uh, set those fields right here. So a Facebook field and biography field. So now whenever you refresh your plugin, it's just going to delete those two fields from the user table and then create them again if you are uh, creating uh, if you are refreshing your plugin if you are removing your plugin then it's just going to remove all of uh, these two fields and uh, from the users table and that's it now in the version dot yml file we are just going to add another point right here which is going to be called add new fields.php okay so that the October knows about it and that's about it now what we have to do is run our migration so when once we run the migration it's going to create those two fields in the users table hopefully so to run the migration for our plugin, we are going to have to refresh the plugin and you do that from the command line. So you go to the directory or folder where your October website is installed and do PHP artisan command. PHP artisan commands work, uh, works with a lot of things in October and Laravel. Uh, and I advise you to get familiar with them. I will definitely make a video about most of the available commands that you have for your command line for uh, October CMS. So we are just going to refresh our plugin and once you refresh it, it's going to run the migration for the plugin. So you do php artisan plugin refresh and then the name uh, namespace of the plugin come on what happened here so the namespace of the plugin which is watch and learn watch and learn in our case and then the name of the plugin and that should be it you just hit enter okay uh, I'm a little bit worried that it didn't say uh, the add new fields so we are going to check our database right now to see if those new fields have been created since I am use since we are using uh, the uh, 
SQL light table for this uh, examples. So for our website, I'm using this SQL light browser uh, application so we can check out our database. And as you can see, this is the users table. And if we click down, you can see the name, email, password, and so on. But at the end right here, you can see the Facebook and bio. So these are the fields that we created via our migration. Now that we have those fields right here, we are going to extend the user plugin to uh, display those fields in the administration. Uh, because right now in our backend, there are no fields for adding Facebook links or uh, biography text. So now let's actually extend the user plugin. We are going to go to plugin.php. So plugins, watch, learn, profile, plugin.php. And now we are going to use uh, the controller of the user's plugin. And we are going to use it as users controller. Okay, so we can now use this name instead of all of this right here. So users controller. And we are going to need that users controller to extend the users plugin. So I'm going to do it down here. And we're going to create a function called boot. So this is the October's function and it's going to run before everything else uh, gets displayed on the page. So it's going to go through that boot function, see that it is extending the user's plugin and then it's going to do something. Okay, so now that we did that, uh, we are going to extend the form fields. So remember right now in our users, we don't have any profile fields. So we need to add those profiles here, fields right here. As I said before, you could technically go to the user and then go to models and uh, fields, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna create those fields uh, by extending the user plugin. And to do that, you would uh, use the users controller and then the extend form fields function. Okay, this is <laughs> a bit long. So we create a function that is using this form model and context variables. And now we can just add those fields right here instead of in the fields YML file. So we are going to put those fields in a separate tab from the usual fields that get uh, that you get with the users uh, plugin. So what I did here is I said I want this Facebook field to have the label of Facebook. It's going to be type text and it's going to appear in the profile tab. Okay, so let's do the same thing for the bio field. But it's not going to be using the type of text, but text area because we need more text in uh, that field. Save this and actually uh, that should be it if we did everything correctly. Let's go right here, refresh this page and I have some trouble. I misspelled uh, controllers right here. So with 1.0, save it. And as you can see, now we have this profile tab and it has two fields, Facebook and biography. So now you can click update details, 
click on profile and then you can add something to Facebook field, add something to biography field and click save and close. As you can see, this all works. Let's see. So our uh, new data has been saved to the database. Okay, so this is it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to show you how you can add those fields to the front end and also save them. As you will see, if you try it out, uh, you can't, as of right now, save those fields to the database via the front end, which is not very useful to you if you don't want the users uh, to see this administration and in most cases you don't so this is the administration mostly for the super super users and for your users you would have uh, something like we did in the one of the previous episodes when we did the users plugin so we are going to do that so the same thing as right here but on the front end it's going to be much quicker as you will see because we already did the uh, most of the heavy lifting Remember, everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. You can ask me questions on YouTube or on my website, or you can follow me on Facebook or on Twitter and ask me questions there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content I put out, maybe subscribe to the channel. And that's it. This has been it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.